All right, hey, this is great. You guys come in here tonight, I love it. And I know it's from your heart too, because it's on my heart. You know, the first time we went to one of these meetings back a few years ago, they were there and the guy from Diamond Wind says, wow, you're pretty passionate. I said, you're gonna put those wind turbines in the bottom of Lake Erie over my dead body. And he said to me, those were pretty strong words. I said, I promise you that I will either chain myself to those things the way civil disobedience, whatever I have to do to draw attention to that happening, I will do it. And I'm sure a lot of you will, Phil. You'll be joining me. I know you will. For you. <laughs> anyway, um, what, what, I, I got some notes, but I want to just talk off my heart. You know, uh, I'll, I'll give you one to get you started a little bit. You know, I was on, I had my TV show on for 18 years. I interviewed Ted Nugent three times. At the end of the first time that I interviewed him, he said to me, Jim, are you political? And I said, no, Ted. And if you ever watch Ted, he's like, he's on fire. And he said to me, Jim, if you don't stand up for your blood brother's rights to hunt, shoot, trap, fish, and enjoy the outdoors, your silence is a vote for the other side. Do not let your silence be, be for the other side. Because if you don't speak up, if you don't put a yard sign, if you don't oppose these, they will win because they, they're going to they're gonna be that way. And, and they're, they're, there's a lot of them. They've got a lot of money. They're passionate. We have politicians calling. Thank God most of the people in the areas uh, are, are on board. Uh, Congressman Jacobs' uh, representative is here today, and he's on board. It's really great. That's important. But one of the things, yes, thank you for that. One of the things I really wanted to talk about, as a fisherman, I'm also a diver. I don't fit in the wetsuit they used to have because I gained a few pounds and you know, can't slip in there so you can't go as deep anymore. But when you're at the bottom of that lake, it is a whole different world down there. There is beauty down there, there's shipwrecks down there, there's all kinds of stuff. And there's pools and pools of what looks like almost gray sea. You could put your hand down in that, almost put your entire body into that hole. You know what that is? That's all pollution from the years past. That is there. You put one of these things down on top of it, you're gonna raise that stuff up and bring it up and put it all over the place. I gotta put the glasses on because I don't see so good anymore. Any guesstimate how many shipwrecks are in the Great Lakes? There are 8,000 shipwrecks in the Great Lakes. And of that, we have 2,000 in Lake Erie. And only 375 of those shipwrecks have been found. You know what's inside those shipwrecks? Bodies, graveyards that have never been touched you imagine them, if they said, we're gonna go in Hawaii, we're gonna put a turbine, we're gonna do it over the Arizona. There would be such an outcry because that's a, that's a tomb. That's a sacred area where, where, where people are entombed and have their final resting place. There has been no environmental impact studies on Lake Erie whatsoever to locate these wrecks. Do we know that there's here, if there's, if there's 2,000 in Lake Erie and only 375 been discovered, there's gotta be a lot of them right out here. There's got to be a lot of them. What if they put that down on top of that final resting place? That really got to me when I, when I started studying that. That was very, very important to me. And as Dave said, the fishing, there's bass areas out there. I'm talking to walleye clubs. You don't care about bass, but they're important. They help me feed my family too. And you have a good time too. But those bass areas are so vital. When the people from Diamond Wind came along and the lady said to me, she handed me a map of Lake Erie. She said, circle the good spawning areas at this end of the lake. I did it all the way from Erie, Pennsylvania to Buffalo because the whole thing is dynamite. You know, we have our migra migrations of walleye that come all through every year, but they spawn here too. How do they know without an environmental impact statement, study, years of study in order to do that? They want to just push them through. Thank God Cuomo's gone. Because if he hadn't been gone, he was going to shove this through whether we liked it or not. So I thank God for that. Oh, yeah, 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 it's so wonderful. The Peace Bridge Project, that was another thing too. They stopped that Peace Bridge pro Project with the turns flying through. And Connie, who's one of the DEC environmental uh, uh, biologists, stopped that program with those turns going to fly into the bridge. And guess what? They won't let her talk to us or even be part of our group because New York State was worried, I'm sure, about Cuomo. Maybe now that he's out now, maybe things would be a little more reasonable. Both Hochul there, too. I'm, I'm not real optimistic. But anyway, stay passionate. Stay informed. Become part of our group. Talk about it. Post it. You know, just, just uh, uh, oppose it whenever it comes through. So thank you. I appreciate it.
Monsoon! <laughs>